Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Adam, how is it going in D.C.? What's the weather looking like? It's going great. So we had some rainy Saturdays, but now uh, yesterday was good. We're in we are in the 70s, 80s today, and I uh, feel like we're finally getting spring. I mean, there's still pollen all over everything. Uh, so I, I could do without that, but I'm just yeah. glad it's not raining. How about yeah. you guys? Same here. Beautiful. It was it, it rained on and off Saturday. Yesterday it was beautiful. And then today was beautiful as well. So um, it's supposed to be like that all week. So we'll see. Hopefully, yeah. more day we, uh, weekend will be a good one. Exactly. Y'all have any plans? I don't. I don't have anything planned. <laughs> but I'm going to find something, I'm sure. Uh, you <laughs> always do. Uh, for me, I, I'm having some friends come to town. So we're just going to be hosting some people. But it should be pretty fun. Uh, yeah. We were talking about you, by the way. Um, me and my uh, – well, so Adam and I, my boss, they used to work together. And so mm. <laughs> I was saying how – Maybe I should say off the line, but I was saying how remember you were going to interview with a job that I was working at, and I told you you probably don't want it because you like to travel too much. <laughs> she said, "Yeah." She said, "When he told me he was traveling for three months, so she's like, <laughs> yeah, that was a special case." But yes, yes, that was a. Uh, I'm like, that just like Adam. Can't stop, won't stop. Can't stop, won't stop. Exactly, exactly. Well, I'll let y'all take away movie views. Sure thing. So uh, first, I want to start with a movie I actually saw last week and I forgot to mention. And this is actually a movie, Chica, you've seen uh, a while ago. So I just want to put it back in people's minds. Ricky Stanicki. Um <laughs> Chike, you saw it, you recommended it, and I finally got a chance to see it. And for anyone who forgot uh, the review, you know, this is a movie starring John Cena and Zac Efron. And it follows the story of these three guys who have this imaginary friend that they use to get out of trouble or get go on trips and stuff like that. And when the significant others of some of these characters want to meet this Ricky Stenicki, they hire this actor that they met in Atlantic city to kind of fill the role. And John Cena plays the role for Ricky. Um, and then of course, shenanigans ensue. But um, I do want to reiterate, this is a fun movie. This is great. I liked it. I actually, and this is in the rare case, I want it more, you know, yeah. there's some scenes that go on and I'm like, this is really cool. And he does a good job. And then we kind of get to our ending pretty quickly. And I'm like, Oh, I was really hoping to get more out of that funniness. But uh, you won't be disappointed in this movie. It's got it's got a lot going for it. It's really fun silliness, uh, and it's got a good message too. You know, they did a good job of kind of covering a lot of bases with this one. But again, it's on Amazon Prime. Uh, and Shige, thanks for the recommendation because uh, Ricky Sticky was uh, was a hit. Um, and then I saw another movie that just came out a couple weeks ago, The Fall Guy. And this one stars Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt, um, very loosely based on a TV show from the early 80s starring Lee Majors. And what it's about is Ryan Gosling plays a stunt double for a very famous Hollywood actor. And he gets injured at the beginning of the movie and he kind of quits doing his work for a while but he gets pulled into doing uh, one more film because the girl he was dating who was a camera operator is now the director of this film played by Emily Blunt and so it goes along that path of him trying to kind of win her back and get back into his groove of being a uh, stunt double um, this movie was directed by David Leach I don't know if I'm saying it right uh, He's he's known for being one of the directors of the John Wilk, uh, John Wick movies. Uh, he produced the other ones, so he knows his action movies. He's a former stuntman himself. Uh, and it was fun. I, you know, this is kind of the ideal popcorn movie. You know, you go in, you watch the action, you watch the stunts, you don't think too hard about the script. Um, and the main reason you do that is because it does kind of fall apart in the third act. Some of the um, storyline gets a little convoluted. They do a little bit too much of the action scenes kind of drag a little bit. But um, overall, I had a good time. Again, I think Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt, both great actors, outstanding people. And they really carry this movie along throughout the whole whole film. Um, and yeah, very enjoyable. So 
looking if you're looking for an easy popcorn movie, you want to watch some fun uh, hijinks happening in Sydney, which is where most of the movie was filmed uh, or takes place, then check this one out. Uh, um, yeah. Do you, have you ever watched the the Fall Guy show? Did you ever watch any? So I remember it a little bit when I was a kid because uh, sometimes I'd wake up early and it would just be on at like 6.30 or 7 in the morning on syndication. So I do remember enjoying it as a kid, but I haven't seen it since then. So a little backstory. If you don't know who Lee Majors is, Lee Majors was the $6 million man. He was the first bionic man. And that series went on to great success for a number of years. And after the show was over he came up with another concept for another show called The Fall Guy. And if anybody knows anything about Lee Majors, he started off as a stuntman. He was a he was a pro athlete, became a stunt person, and then found his way as a $6 million man. And The Fall Guy story is kind of loosely based off of his beginnings as a stuntman in Hollywood. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a cool little, uh, you know, a lot of people don't think about the stuntman. And stunt women out there, yeah. but yeah, they do a lot, and they really keep a movie going. So, uh, yeah, yeah, kudos to them. Yeah, do you see anything else? Nope, that's all I had time for for this weekend. But uh, yeah, okay. So, I saw uh, two films, ironically, that starred Anne Hathaway, and I'm not. It's not like I'm particularly an Anne Hathaway fan. It's just I. I saw one because I was just interested in it. I saw it and I just wanted to watch it. And then the other one was so opposite to the other film. It made me want to watch it just to see her performances. She has an Oscar, so let's see if she's worth it. You know what I mean? So I wanted to see what she was giving. So the first film was The Idea of You, which is now streaming on uh, Amazon Prime. And it's basically about a 40-year-old mother who takes her daughter to Coachella and she meets this 24 year old pop star and they actually fall in love. Well, she falls in love with him and this whole, will they, won't they all eyes on them. Uh, she's so unused to that type of relationship. He's too young for her. Uh, she doesn't fit into his, his scene, like all that stuff, but it has teeth on it beyond all of that which I thought was very interesting. Like they really touch on some real relationship issues. Um, it's a lot of adulting going on in this this movie. And I'm not, I don't mean like in a perverted way, but a lot of adult issues and they actually mm -hmm. are honest and they hash out, you know, the, the issues with their relationship and what actually surrounds them um, in that bubble that they're in. So I, I definitely recommend check it out. The second one was a film called Eileen on... Kulu. Now, Eileen is a totally different movie. It's kind of like dark noir, and it's about uh, a young uh, administrative assistant in a prison, a boy's prison, and she is coming of age. I think she's actually 20, and she's in a deadbeat town. Uh, she had experienced some college, so she knows what life is like in the city, but she feels trapped in this small town, and she, her dad was sheriff and so she's kind of popular, her family's popular, but she feels trapped and she feels like she's in a dead end. And and Hathaway's character comes in and she's the new psychiatrist for the boy's prison. However, she's batshit crazy. And the girl gets seduced by her and she's influenced by her. And that change that starts to happen over spending time with this Eileen person. And um it's it's it, I think it's dynamic to see Anne Hathaway in that one role and then yeah. switch over to this film to see her in a totally another light back to back like this. Yeah. Not too many actors have multiple things streaming at the same time, mm -hmm. but uh, I definitely want to check it out for that reason. You're an Oscar winner. Let me see what you can do. And I was blown away by both. So I recommend Eileen as well. And that's on Hulu. Right. And. The last thing that I saw was American Fiction starring Jeffrey Wright, Tracy Ellis Ross, Erica Alexander, and the legend Leslie Uggams, and Issa Rae makes an appearance in this film. So basically, I'm sure you've heard about this film already. Um, it was a contender for the Oscars. And um, it's basically about an author who 
through circumstances of life, he winds up in a very unique situation. And he's so frustrated with the uh, writing industry. He's like fed up with publishing. Um, he His books aren't selling. He's going into the bookstore, seeing his books pushed to the back in like the African-American section. And he's like, I don't write about African-American things. I just happen to be African-American. But he doesn't realize that that doesn't matter. And he's seeing the success of this book, which he finds garish and rude and insulting. And it's just climbing the charts. So he makes a book out of a joke. Like he just makes some stuff up in his head and he's joking about it. And they want to give him like a hundred and seventy fifty thousand dollar advance. And he's like, no, but this and he needs the money. So he gets trapped and roped into this situation. And the book is just getting more famous and it's rising. And they're talking about doing a movie on it. And he's in conflict with who he really is versus who people perceive him to be and who he wants to be. And I think that's a very great dynamic in human life. And the way that they do that with the overlay of this story, it's beautifully written. Uh, it's a great movie. I see why it was nominated. You should definitely check it out. Well, now we get to ask because Steve did not like the ending. And I was okay with the ending. What was your thought on the ending, Chike? Um, but that was a whole part of the story. Like I didn't like it. <laughs> because you probably like cookie cutter endings. <laughs> No, oh, but when the now that the movie's out there, people can probably have seen it. Mm. When they killed him, I was thinking, God, look <laughs> in the movie. But um, you know, had multiple endings, but I did not like it. I wanted him to get the girl. No I did too, but I liked the ending fine because that's the only way they could have really ended it, I think. Yes, yes. And then you have to figure it was the movie was about the the plight of a black man. What would be the plight of a black man? He would be murdered in that fashion. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I did like the um, complexities with the family. You know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. it was really a family trauma movie almost. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, Tracy Ellis Ross, when she died, I, I was like, what? Kind of yeah, was? that was unexpected. You know, um, yeah, but I love seeing Erica back on the big screen. Yeah. Um, um, and it's good to see legends like Leslie Uggams. If you don't know who Miss Leslie Uggams yeah. is, yeah. you better do some research. And mm -hmm. she's also going to be in uh, the next Deadpool movie because, you know, she's Deadpool's sidekick. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Not that I, I love that movie. I love that movie. I really do. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Well, I already talked about what I saw. I, I went to a stage play of um, production of The Preacher's Wife. Um, Amber Riley plays um, the lead character, Julia. But the way that the play is, it's not really like a lead character. You know, even though they had Denzel Washington's character, and please forgive me, I don't know none of their names. I just know Riley, um, Amber Riley and Loretta Devine, because she plays when he's, well, Amber's mother. But the, also, they changed up a little bit of the storyline. So in this, in the movie, um, you know, the whole premise is about that you know, uh, Whitney Houston and Courtney B. Vance are married. Um, he's the pastor, she's the preacher, and he prays for a miracle because everything's going crazy with the church and with you know the community. And the angel comes down, Denzel Washington, and he kind of helps save the day. He falls in love with Whitney Houston's character, um, whatever, whatever. This one, oh, remember they had to get um, help from Gregory Hines's character, who was um, the rich man in the neighborhood who had the wealth. Mm -hmm. Well, this one, they they had Whitney Houston's character, who's Amber Riley, and the rich guy, they dated when they were young. She got knocked up at 16, and then she met the preacher um, while she was pregnant with the baby, and he took her in. It was just a whole bunch of weird stuff. Like, why don't you make her a slut? Not a slut, but you know what I mean. Why did they change it like that? So some of the differences, they, they did change. But overall, everyone was talented. Everyone did great performances. I was really impressed, because I've heard Loretta Devine like, sing you know, in recent um, years, like on the Up Shows. I'm not Up Shows. Um, whatever show they had on Netflix. Um, and, um, and she played Medea. That was the, her character's name. But hearing her sing in the play, she killed it. Like she hit this note. This girl was like, mm, mm. she she's very animated. This girl was so beside But um, but it was really good. It was really good. The only thing I told you, the only thing I didn't like about it 
Not one song from the Preacher's Wife soundtrack was sung. Um, I guess they didn't have the rights. But they did have some really good songs, but we just didn't know them. But the performances were really good, and it was long. Like, you know, at the end, you're kind of like, can y'all not sing another song and just wrap this thing on up? And now you hear that music start playing, and you're like... <laughs> like, here we go. <laughs> but it was good. It was good. And and even though, you know, it's it's a fictitious story, but they had a real choir. That choir, you thought you were in church. People were praising the Lord and everything. <laughs> but it was, it was good. But it was just... I wanted to hear... The music from the soundtrack, I wanted it to be a little bit shorter, but it was good. It was good. But that's all I saw. Nice. What about uh, Abbott Elementary? Are we, is the season oh done? Oh, my God. I watched that. Uh, I, I didn't watch it Thursday. You know, that comes on Thursdays now. I watched it Friday, though. And that show, it just does no wrong. It can't yeah. do any wrong. Remember when they had the, um, they gone on the field trip? Yeah. Then, yeah. The, the principal's rival um, school. They yeah. Went there, they went to decide who um, had the turf, uh, did for the turf, and so they did the relay race. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a good episode. One, so I will say one complaint is I feel like they're ending every season with Janine and Gregory, will they, won't they? And I'm <laughs> like, all right, we got to pick a new, either you either put them together or don't, but quit making this like the end of every season of like, right. oh, like, I'm well, getting tired the of that. Actor, the actor that plays him doesn't want that to happen. He doesn't want them to be together. Yeah. Yeah, and together. that's good. Make, pick that lane, go down that lane and let, like, let's and develop more stories then, because, yeah, I can't, I can't have this. Just after, like, the, <laughs> the when they were at the Benjamin Franklin Institute last season at the end, I'm just like, all yeah. right. And then we wait all season and it's the exact same thing happening again. I'm like, okay. And that hater but, comes in and talking yeah. about he Ever date anyone that you work with? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Come on, guys, give us, give us yeah. something. So, but yeah, it's a great show. Well, you know, I this is a little bit off. Yeah. I want to say, um, X Men ninety seven has ended. Fabulous, 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 fabulous. A plus, hand claps, all that. Season two has already been greenlit. Um, they were coming with the drama. It's 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 different. It's not like it was before. It's it's much deeper. Yeah, and um. Ray reviews, two's already on board, and they're working on three. So, nice. with that being said, um, streaming people, please support any, and this is for anything that you like. Please u- utilize the stars and the thumbs up because that tells people that you know you're into that particular art, and they will give you more of what you're looking for. Um, interview with a vampire has restarted the second season. Uh, they're talking, they're in a different phase of the book, and this is when they're in uh, Europe, and they have reached France. So if you watch the movie, they're now at the part where they meet the other vampires that are part of the play. Mm. It's very interesting. Storyline's a little augmented, little just a little different than what we saw in the movie, but it gives you more detail. It goes behind more of the, the storyline. Definitely right. check it out. The makeup is fabulous. The costume costumes are fabulous. It's beautifully written. It's it's worth the watch. Nice. Anything else coming down the pipeline? Uh, well, summer season's ramping up, so we got Furiosa this weekend. Uh, the Mad Max story. We have uh, as Chica mentioned, Deadpool versus Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is going to be it looks like a pretty fun one. Those are kind of the top two for my summer. Uh, hits so far and i know there's a lot of stuff coming out it's hard to keep up i mean inside out 2 on the animated front um i'm trying to think what else but yeah lots of things coming down there's a uh, film that i want to see called ezra starring bobby carnival and uh and the whoopi goldberg's in it and robert De Niro is also oh, in yeah. it. and it's Let's about see. um a father and his uh son that's on the autistic spectrum i saw the long trailer and I got welled up. I was like, oh, God, this one's going to hurt. Like, it's, it's, yeah. it's hitting me with the drama right off. So, yeah, I want to yeah. check that out. It looks like it's going to have weight to it. Yeah, Robert uh, De Niro, he was on um, The View last week promoting it. And it looks mm. like what they showed. All right, guys. Well, as always, thank you for letting us know what to spend our time and money on, what not. And uh, hope you have a great weekend or a great rest of your week and holiday weekend. And we'll be right back after this.